It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Ann Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, along with the audio engineer extraordinaire, Mr. Tim Tippett. Hey Tim Tippett, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Ann? I'm doing great. Tim, I got a question for you, which I think you've probably received multiple times in the past. Um, mm-hmm. But it brings me back to when I first started in voiceover and I was on the Voice123 pay, uh, pay to play. And the mm-hmm. first time I saw this term was to normalize my audio to minus 3 dB. And right. I get the question all the time from people new to the industry, like, what? Sh- how, do I no- how do I normalize? What is normalization? Do I need to do it? And at what level do I need to do it? So I thought it would be a good time to maybe talk about, at least begin the conversation about normalization and mm-hmm. what it is and why we need to do it. Uh, <laughs> I know that I have been normalizing my audio to minus 3 dB, but maybe I don't need to. Well, <laughs> why did you think you needed to normalize to minus 3 dB back in the day? What did they tell you? They basically said all auditions had to be sent in um, and normalized to minus 3 dB. And my understanding was so that, you know, all of the all of the submissions came in at roughly the same volume level. And that right. was what helped to do that. So the minus 3 dB is so that people can hear you at a certain level, right. regardless of the device that they're on. Right. Mm hmm. But these days now you're hearing what? Anything from. Oh, my goodness. I've heard, you know, zero. I think the next in line, I heard zero. Then I heard minus six, uh, minus one. I've heard all different values. And so I, is there a standard? Is, you know, is there a right answer for that? Well, let me ask you a question. OK, so minus three dB has always been the broadcast standard mm-hmm. for normalization, right? Mm-hmm. Which means whatever the loudest peak is in your audio, it's going to look at that. And if it's louder uh, than minus three dB, then it's going to lower that. Like, let's say it came in at minus one dB. Right. It's going to lower that to minus three dB, mm-hmm. right? Which is a total of two dB. And it's going mm-hmm. to take all of the other audio down with it, two dB, right? So that's what peak normalization is all about. Now, if you were well under at minus six and that was your loudest peak, then it's going to lift that three dB right. to get it to minus three dB. And the rest of the audio is also going to be lifted by three dB. Make sense? That's peak normalization. That's peak normalization. Right. So there's exactly. a different, okay. there's another normalization too that I learned about when I was doing some audiobook work. Right. And that's RMS, which which stands for root mean squared. So it's a fancy way of saying averaging. So you're averaging the overall volume of the entire thing. And that's fine for audiobooks. Right. But when we talk about normalizing, whether it's for an audition or for a job or whatever, let's just talk about, say, let's say it's for auditions. Let's Mm -hmm, just let's just put it there, because that's that's really where the conversation is today is at what level should I be normalizing so that the people on the other end are listening to me at level X? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're hearing anything from 0.1, which is the absolute highest that you can pretty much go, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or minus six dB, right? If you come in at minus three dB and we've got two ands, Mm -hmm. okay, not with the same talent level. If one comes in at minus one dB, and is not so good, but the other and comes in at minus three dB, which one do you think they're going to choose? Oh, <laughs> that's a good right? question. Like, I never so thought if, of if, it in that, and I never thought of it in that way. <laughs> well, if you're not, if you're not <laughs> right. so good, yeah, if you're not so good, do you just want to suck two dB louder? Yeah, I don't want to amplify that. <laughs> but, but <Right>. <laughs> so so we're, we're assuming a lot when we say, hey, send it in at well, minus uh, one dB or, or whatever. You're assuming that you, that everyone has is equally talented. Right. Or the other thing too, Tim, is that I've had people when, you know, my students are submitting homework and I have them record MP3s, I always make sure they normalize it so I can at least, I don't have to play, play with the volume all the time. But sometimes that will bring up not just their voice, but the all that audio and that noise in the studio as well. 
So right. not just right. the talent, um, <laughs> maybe not being as good, but the talent in all of the audio environment as well being brought up to light. And then a lot of times the students will be like, what? I, I don't know where that came from. Let me just, I, if I don't normalize it, it sounds better. <laughs> so. Well, okay. So <laughs> this is this is one of the misunderstandings that we should really clear up because mm-hmm. if your input levels are at minus six to minus 12 dB when you're voicing and you're watching your meter. Right. We're now near that minus three dB level. So Mm -hmm. if we're listening in real time, we can hear if there are any noisemakers. Yeah. Right. Because we are up at that level. I've actually had some people record at very, very low levels because they say, hey, it lowers my noise floor. Sure. (laughs) Okay. And that's all good and fine. But reality is you then have to bring it up to minus three dB. And using the math, if you lower it to where your peaks are at minus 22 dB, let's say, Okay, right. without getting too far into the math of it, and your noise floor is quiet. Well, when you go to normalize it to minus three dB so that it can be heard nice and loud, all that noise floor goes up with yep. it. So whatever the yep. difference between minus twenty two and minus three is, that same level of noise floor is now going to be increased by that same dB level. So all that noise floor is just going to get louder and louder. So that's why you want your input or one of the reasons why you want your input levels to come in somewhere between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. Not consistently. You can go Mm -hmm. over Mm -hmm. minus 6 here and there and under minus 12. That's fine. We're just talking about an average. But we want to understand what our noise floor is before we voice so that when we do normalize, we don't have this big problem of all of this sure. noise coming back up with it. And and you know what? You're the first person, um, well, that I've actually like heard talk about this is where your voice should come in at. I've always thought, oh, I look at my levels and I definitely don't want to go into the red, right? I'm looking at the colors of my levels. I've never mm-hmm. actually looked at the values. And so mm-hmm. that's a good place to shoot for in terms of where we should be recording at in the first place. So that when we do normalize, it's not going to, well, we're not surprised, let's say, with a <laughs> Right. With a lot of noise or a lot of other unexpected things that we didn't think we heard. Right. Well, if your interface, if the interface that you're going into has an indicator of green, yellow, red, you don't right. want to be going in the red right. on that because that means you're clipping that interface. Right. Okay? Which is what I was always taught to look for. Just don't go into the red. Be in the yellow. That's what right, I was. You, yeah. Right. But you have to look in two places. Mm. You have to look at your interface to make sure that that's not happening. And then you need to look inside your software. Yes. Yes. To make sure that that's not happening. Oh, on levels. good okay. point. Good point. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good now point. you can go you can go into the red in the software that that's not a problem. Like I said, mm. you can go over minus six and you can hit minus three here and there. But you just don't want to go to zero. You just don't want to clip because that is the digital equivalent of distortion that a human mm-hmm. would hear in real life with db right like it, if, if something were 140 db and you were next to it and listening to it your hearing would just i mean it would hurt okay and zero is the digital equivalent of that the problem is is we have no scale above that for the computer to relate mm-hmm. to because what is pain well pain has to be something so let's call it zero and then we'll move backwards from there Oh, because in re- okay. because yep. in real life, dB can go infinitely louder and louder and louder. Like like right, like right. If, if a star were to explode, the dB level would be absolutely insane, right? And there's no <laughs> way there's no way to <laughs> measure good, that beyond that's a good zero. Example, I like that. Y- y- yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So we have to use this negative in order to mm-hmm. kind of get an idea of where we're at with things. But anyway, regardless, if you do go into the red here and there, that's fine. That's not a problem. Just and don't that's clip. in the red on your software, correct? Yeah, on your software, yeah. on your meter. Yeah, just don't clip. And clipping mm-hmm. is when you hit absolute zero and you look at the waveform and it's, you know, it's beyond the ruler. Right. And uh, that's that's not good because it will begin to distort. Gotcha. Yeah. So then normalization is a thing that we must do. And so if we have to pick a number, what number do you pick? I use minus three dB again. Mm-hmm. Again, to, you know, we'll use me as an example, okay? It, if I come in talking like this and here's my audition and, hey, please hire me because I could really use the money, and I come in <laughs> saying that at... Uh, <laughs> you got it, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I got it, yeah. Uh, you know, so the other Tim comes in and says, you know, Tim Tippett's and Slate's and, hey, you know, I'd really like this job and it's for Mercedes-Benz or whatever, and it comes in at minus 3 dB. Um, sorry, 
the guy at minus three dB is going to get the job Mm -hmm. because he's not lame. Right Mm -hmm. now, again, this concept of coming in at, you know, higher and higher levels, this is part of what's called the loudness war. All right. As far as how I look at it and the loudness war started somewhere in the late eighties or nineties or something like that. Mm. And a lot of us audiophiles really didn't appreciate it because what radio stations were doing is they were maximizing the, maximizing the volume across the board to be as loud as they possibly could uh-huh. because louder is perceived as better. Oh, interesting. All right. Mm. So uh, I believe it was Metallica. I believe, I think it's the loudest record in history. And I took a listen to it and it doesn't sound good to wow. me. Wow. Okay. Having heard, having heard Metallica from the 80s and yeah, then yeah. listening to that album, I was just like, wow, you guys are really like, you're doing it just to do it. It was like a spinal tap moment. It was Mm -hmm, almost like a a comedic thing. Okay. And when you listen to dynamic music that is well mixed and it has really nice lows and really nice highs, Mm -hmm. you get this sense of, you know, being brought down to that emotion where it needs to be. Sure. Just like if I'm whispering here Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to convey an emotion and then if I get louder and I get angry, you get an idea that there's dynamic range there. But if everything that I just did there came in at the same volume level, yeah, you're not the 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 stuff isn't going to be conveyed correctly. And it, so it's that's not. So it's interesting to me that that you mentioned that louder was thought to be better. Well, <laughs> so back in the loud, day, yeah, louder, louder being better is just a, a thing. It's human mm-hmm. nature. Yep. Okay. Yep. That said. When you take something that is louder, that is consistently loud, and you put it over something that is meant to be dynamic, and then you mix them together versus a dynamic VO that is not necessarily consistently louder, you are going to have more of an impact overall with the one that was done correctly, where there are dynamics, Dynamics. versus the one that is just crushing, hitting the wall consistently. And it's just driving things as loud as it possibly can. Yeah. Okay? And when, when everything is loud, like nothing sticks out. Nothing is unique. Nothing is brought to light. So I think it's hard for the ear to discern, you know, uh, different emotions and nuances like you're saying. What do you mean, Anne? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, my question is, so we talked about peak normalization. Mm-hmm. When, um, and now I heard that you use um, the... RMS when you're using audiobooks and why? Why is that done? Because, okay, so RMS, the reason that you want or they want consistent volume across the board is because people will be listening on their iPhones, in their cars, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on their computers, et cetera. And while audiobook quality is important, what is more important to audiobook producers is that the end user is not constantly reaching for the volume dial right to increase or decrease the volume they that makes want a lot of be, sense yeah. yeah they want it to be consistent um they don't want it crushed right right uh, mm-hmm. like we just talked about but they do want it to be consistent and rms provides that because it averages the loudness across the board versus using one target value and then using that as the measure. Okay. So here's a very here's a very elemental question then. Why not use like in, in some audio um, editors, like I have Amplify, right? What's the difference between Amplify, amplifying in a negative direction, um, or doing a normalization? Well, if you use Amplify, you don't really have kind of a under the hood thing to look at, right? And or if you do, you really need to know what you're doing Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. amplifying something may get you the levels that you're looking for, but you may not have the ear or the knowledge to be able to get there responsibly. Right. So Mm. typically amplify responsibly. Yeah. Amplify (laughs) responsibly. But (laughs) but but are we really amplifying or are we averaging? And the answer is we're right. averaging. That's okay. that's the question. Because I will actually take something if I happen to if I happen to have a peak that just is one peak in mm-hmm. my audio, I will deamplify just that one peak. 
Right. But now you are running on the Manly Vox box and we uh, have true. we have that just a little bit of control with right. that compression, right? I and haven't so, done that since I've been using the Manly. You're right. Right. And yep. and we've had that conversation mm-hmm. about responsible compression. Now responsible compression is going to take care of that little Correct. peak that you have. So you don't yes. have to go in there manually and fix it. That's, That's the whole right. idea. I love okay? it. <laughs> yeah. So again, when when people say, you know, should you send in your your audio affected? Uh, if you know what you're doing or you have someone you're working with who knows what they're doing, then the answer is yes, because it's going to save you a ton of time and it's going to emulate better mic control. You're going to sound mm-hmm. better because of the EQ and, and, and so on. Again, not the, hey, I'm going to go on YouTube and learn how to do this version of it, but an actual educated and or person helping you who sure. knows what they're doing. Okay, so. I think that there's also something to, that, that comes into play when we're talking about having to normalize um, our, our audio before we send it off. And that is a little bit of mic technique in terms of if you're going to be overly emotional or, or excited or, you know, a little bit loud. Um, I think that mic technique really plays a role in how your normalization takes because your peaks might be higher if you're not using proper mic technique. Thoughts on that? Well, yeah, that's correct. So if you back off the mic and you do not have an effects rack in play, uh, I will do it now. I will get far away from my mic and I will get very loud. Now you can hear my room. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's a problem. Now, right. Exactly. If, if I were able to decrease my output volume, which I'll do right now, okay, with real time processing, and I get that loud then you don't hear my room. Correct. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's really all a ma- you know in this case I'm on the manly box box with the with the Apollo sure. solo. Now, okay. So it makes all the difference in the world when you're able to do that. So that's controlling it software. Now what about physical? Like if I just I think also we can just turn away from the mic a little bit. Like if I were mm-hmm. like right now I'm kind of in the mic a little bit side slightly angled, but mm-hmm. if I were going to be a little bit louder, I turn a little bit more. Thankfully I don't have room noise cuz you built my studio. Yeah, um, right. But I think for me that would be quicker than me like do using a software control. But then again, I just I never even thought because it's my first month or so with the Manly, so I didn't even yeah. think about doing the software control. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I I did a commercial um, for Bazooka Brands where I did a very very quiet read. You know the the leaning in mm-hmm. uh, type of read on my four sixteen. And then I had to yell bazooka, like really right, loud, right. right? And all I did was simply take the output of my manly and I turned it down. And, uh, uh-huh. and but, then you know, the people, yep. yeah, and the people in London, sure. uh, were, I was like, how's my level? They were like, fine. I go, great, let's do it, right? And then I turned it back up for the end of that commercial so I could do the softer parts again because it goes soft, loud, soft. Now, a lot of that does have to do with mic technique as well because sure. a lot of people will have the mic right in front of them and they get plosives, plosives right. like that. Exactly. But if you angle it off to the side like this, you know, at, right. at around, you know, 30 mm-hmm. to 45 degrees, depending, and crosstalk the mic, then plosives, plosives, Peter Piper all right. day long. No problem. Right? Exactly. And that's so, what I had to do before. And maybe we should just explain a little bit about the Manly because not everybody has the Manly Vox Box. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Explain like what that is and how uh, voice talent will be able to use that. Sure. Okay. So the Manly is a plugin and that's uh, software inside of the Apollo console. Apollo makes various interfaces. They have the twin, the duo, the, the solo, et cetera. And these devices come with plugins that act like real time studio rack units. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, It could be compression, it could be EQ, it could be all sorts of things. But the Manly in particular has a built in deesser, it has a built in EQ and a built in compressor. So that when you're hearing me, you're hearing me in real time, me being dialed in to sound the best that I can sound or as much like right. I can sound uh, like myself, right? Or, or to, to say it correctly, to sound uh, as close to my real voice in real sure. life. Okay, so, Because each mic has its own properties that will make anyone sound any different way. Right, and that may right. not necessarily be optimized. And so, and so being able to control our loudness with a Manly Vox file is, is specific to the Apollo interfaces. Can you use, is, do that, is that plugin available anywhere else? No. Okay. 
So no. it's only and for people that have Apollo interfaces. So, but I assume that there yeah. is there something equivalent in other interfaces or yeah, sure, plugins? sure. There, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. There, there are units out there, and I have experimented with those. And of course, I work with clients all the time who have various units. But I'm just going to tell you nothing. In my personal opinion. There's nothing that even comes close. Mm, it, it's, mm. you know, I mean, it, it's good. Don't get me wrong. And we, and we also have people who are using DBX units in racks that sound fairly decent. But again, nowhere near the type of control that you have here uh, for several reasons. One is, again, the Manly Vox box is a $4,600 unit in real life. Mm. This is a faithful emulation of it. When it's not on sale, it's $300. Right, right. When it does go on sale, which I think you got it on sale for like $129 mm-hmm. or something. Okay. We talked about that in yep. the interfaces episode. And uh, yeah, it's just you have control right here in real time. The thing pops up and it looks just like the rack, except you just take your mouse and right. you move the knobs around and you adjust them until it sounds fantastic. So then a combination of normalization and then depending on, I would say, your performance, right? If it's super Mm -hmm. dynamic, super loud, super soft, those sorts of things, a combination of your your either manly vox or your software control and mic technique and normalization can create a winning audition and even just something that I would submit as to a client as my final product. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, as a as a final product, uh, they're more than likely going to want it at minus three dB because you need to mm-hmm. give them what's called headroom. You need to give them some room to work with. And if they have to lower you overall, that's going to be an annoyance. I know it is for me when I have to do a project and someone sends it up, you know, to me and it's sure. just been blasted and it's clipping and all that. But the the bottom line is this when you're normalizing and you're sending your stuff out, if your agent or if the P2P is saying look you must normalize to this level then go ahead and normalize to that level that Mm -hmm. that, that's fine that's what they want okay but again what you should really be focusing on when it comes to sending in your audio is quality of audio and performance bottom line this concept of 2 db louder or whatever is distracting everybody in my opinion Mm -hmm. i'm hearing it a lot lately and I just, I don't think it's something we should be focusing on. So as far as normalization goes, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. <laughs> all right. Well, that sounds great. Well, thanks for clearing a lot of that up. I think that, uh, you know, it, it's going to help a lot of people that are, you know, have, that have had questions in the past and are wondering, like, what do I even, what do I worry about? What number? I think minus three dB is a, is a good, is a good place to be. Uh, that <laughs> along with proper mic technique and... Um, a good environment is going to get you that winning gig. So bingo, yeah. bingo. Good stuff. All right. So I'd like to give a great big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. We can communicate in a very controlled quality <laughs> loudness situation. Um, <laughs> and you can find out more at IPDTL.com. All right, guys, you have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.